First of all, um, let me introduce myself. My name is Daya Ben Mesaud, and I'm a senior software engineer on the front end experiences team at Algolia. And welcome to part two of this uh, day of workshops in Algolia DevCon, at Algolia DevCon 2022. Um, if you followed uh, the previous workshop hosted by Sarah Dayan, uh, you might find this one pretty familiar, uh, albeit with a different technology, because we're going to switch uh, React Instance Search hooks with uh, the vanilla JavaScript version of this library um, that's uh, aptly named instancesearch.js. And you might wonder what, why we are doing uh, a version for vanilla JavaScript at all. Uh, well, not every project can have the luxury of using the latest and greatest React framework. And sometimes you'll have a PHP, Ruby backend that serves HTML. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't have nice things like a delightful search and discovery experience powered by Algolia. And surprise, this is exactly what we are set to do today in the next 90 minutes. So uh, to get started, let me show you what we want to achieve. Well, we want to have a nice homepage uh, that uh, exhibits a not a complete experience that allows you to search for uh, popular queries uh, like Nintendo, iPad, and you see that you can interact with some of them. And I'll show you how you can do that in a few minutes. And you also have in this home page uh, some discovery elements that are surfaced from Algolia Recommend. And these are trending products. And I'll explain you later how they are uh, computed and why, and uh, how you can leverage that power in your uh, web application. And if we move on to the search experience in itself, you can see that we still have the autocomplete as part of the common uh, design of this web application. And it will communicate uh, with our instant search JS application. Like if I type here iPad, you see that now we have all of the iPads that are available in our product catalog. And you see that on the left, the filters are updated ac ac accordingly to show uh, the uh, values that, are, uh, that match the products that are available. But that's something that we want to achieve. And right now, if we take a look at our current state, we see that it's pretty not there. Well, we have a placeholder for some of the filters. We have a placeholder for the product results. And in the home page, we don't have our autocomplete experience and the trending products have disappeared. So um, that's our start starting state. And we assume in this workshop that your data is already indexed uh, with Algolia. And uh, so we are not going to cover that. As you can see here, we have a, an index that's populated with records. And those records uh, are going to be retrieved with our instant search and autocomplete uh, implementations. And if you want to know more about how to add your uh, product catalog into Algolia, um, feel free to check out uh, Kisha and uh, Khalid uh, talks from yesterday's uh, Algolia DevCon uh, that are available in uh, our Algolia DevCon YouTube playlist. Hopefully, someone in the chat will post a link. And for the purpose of this workshop, I want to acknowledge uh, Backmarket, um, a trusted customer of us that kindly lent us a portion of their data set. And a huge thanks to them. Uh, it will allow us to have a, a, a very uh, real experience instead of using uh, sample data. So thank you to Backmarket. And I just have to mention that, of course, the data is still their property. And uh, we are not authorized to use it in any other way outside of the purpose of this uh, workshop. So just so you know. All right, <clears throat> let's get started. What uh, what are we going to start with? We are going to start with uh, the autocomplete, which will be the common uh, thread uh, that is going to bind the, the these two pages. And uh, what's an autocomplete? Well, it's a way uh, to have elements of your search being surfaced uh, in an interactive way by letting a user type some query 
and have, for example, in this case, we want to have the popular query uh, that are uh, uh, mostly typed by other people being surfaced. So you can guide them through their uh, shopping journey. And in the in this demo uh, that we are using, the dependencies are already installed and already imported. So we are not going to bother with that. But let's just start with this file. The Bootstrap JS file is the one that is going to be loaded uh, by all of our pages. And that's the starting point. How does autocomplete JS works? Well, it needs to uh, target a container in your HTML page. And we can see that here in our uh, blade template, in our layout. We see that we already have a div here that's, that has an ID. And uh, it's currently empty. If we write something here, you can see in the page on the right where it should appear approximately. All right, let's go back to our JS file. To uh, start initializing an autocomplete uh, uh, experience instance here, well, it's easy. You just, have, you just have to type this. I'm kidding. I'm using snippets for the sake of this workshop. So uh, I'll explain every line for you, so we don't have to wait. So you don't have to wait for me as I type every character uh, painstakingly. Well, uh, an autocomplete instance uh, is just a call to the autocomplete method uh, that's used, that's imported from the atalgolia slash autocomplete JS library. And as I said earlier, it requires a container. And in this instance, we want the autocomplete uh, component to open its dropdown when we focus on it. We don't want to wait for any input because we are going to add in just a few seconds, uh, a plugin for that, and that's a spoiler, that will allow us to retrieve the query suggestions from our data set. You can add a placeholder. You can specify a, a media query that allows autocomplete to switch between a desktop-like experience and a mobile-like experience. Because as you can see, our website is responsive, and we need to take in, that into account. And then we have a bunch of class names that allow us to target uh, atomically the components inside of our autocomplete uh, implementation to add stuff, uh, for example, here to add styles related to Tailwind CSS, which is the backbone of our uh, implementation here design-wise. So let me save this, and let's take a look at the page on the right. Here we are on, in a mobile-like experience. And as you can see, we now have this magnifying glass. And when we click on it, you can see the, the panel took over the whole page uh, in a full screen mode, which allow us to now type something, for example, Apple here. And uh, well, nothing happens. Let me just check if something happened in desktop mode. Well, nothing happened here neither. Why? Well, that's because we only instantiated autocomplete, but we didn't tell the uh, autocomplete implementation where uh, the data comes from and, and how should it load it. And for that, we're going to rely on a few plugins that are uh, shipped with autocomplete. Uh, and the first of these is the query suggestion plugin. And the query suggestion plugin is going to load data straight from Algolia. So for that, you're, go you're going to need a way to um, create the link between the library and uh, the, the Algolia, Algolia server. So if we take a look at some of the files I have in my repository, you can see that I have already instantiated an Algolia search client with credentials that are specific to my use case here. And I'm going to reuse this instance for both the autocomplete implementation now and the instant search implementation later, later, which will allow us to share the cache and will optimize the requests. And so let's add our plugin here. There is a bunch of lines, but basically we tell our plugin that we want to bind uh, to add a search client that will communicate with Algolia using the correct credentials. And we want to target a specific index which is, which is the index that uh, 
is populated with the query suggestions. We are not going to use the index uh, which is populated with our products because that's not the main use case here. And then we are going to transform uh, the elements as, a, as they are coming from the server. And for that, we have a few methods here. The get item URL method will allow us to create a link that will make us move to the search page with the selected query uh, as a search parameter. And then we have uh, templates. Templates allow us to take control over the layout of uh, a single item in this query suggestion experience. And if we just take this ad as is, we see that it's a simple link uh, that displays the, the query. So let's add it to our autocomplete experience here. For that, we just need to populate a plugins array. And let's refresh. And boom, now we have the autocomplete experience that has been added. And as you can see, when I click on it, the open uh, unfocus true is uh, active. And so it directly opened the, the drop down panel. And as you can see, I already have some data coming from uh, Algolia. And if I type iPhone, for example, well, it will show me all the uh, results that are matching the iPhone element. But as you can see, it's pretty ugly right now. So let's quickly change that with something that's more pleasant to the eye. And here we have a bunch of code. But let me just take a minute of your time to talk to you about the HTML, this HTML element. What's this? Well, it's something pretty new in the autocomplete library that allows you to have the benefits of a VDOM uh, implementation, like React or Preact, without uh, the downsides of it, without having to use a build system for your application. Because, for example, you don't have a build system in your Ruby application, and you can just write some JavaScript, and it will be interpreted as is. And that's very interesting. It allows you to pre it prevent from having like uh, to prevent vulnerabilities like XSS because you are not directly writing into DOM, you are uh, generating virtual DOM elements. And so this HTML tag template allow you to use HTML like an HTML like syntax with some added features. Like for example, here you, you can add event handlers that are more like what you can do with React. And but you can bind them directly here with, instead of uh, targeting the element with JavaScript and then adding add event listener later. So it's very powerful. And if we save that and look at our implementation now, well, it's much better, isn't it? We now have a dedicated icon. We have the query that's correctly displayed. And then we have an action on the right. And this action is very important, especially in mobile. This action is called a tap ahead, and it allows you to populate the search input with the current query to drill down on what you want to search. For example, you want to target specifically Apple products, and then you can target Apple iPhone and iPhone 7, etc. So that's very powerful. And now we, we already have our query suggestions. That's great. But let me just type something here. Uh, for example, I, I want to search for iPhones. OK, that's cool. iPhone is not part of the initial set of uh, query suggestions. But the best experiences, like the one you, found, you find in Amazon, for example, will remember what you have typed in earlier instances of your journey to make it more easier to go back to those results quickly. And for that, we have the second plugin that's uh, shipped with Algolia Autocomplete.js. And this plugin is the Recent Searches plugin, well, the name as you would expect, correctly describes what it's meant to do. So let's add it right now. All right, we now have our recent searches plugin. And it expects a key that will be used here in this instance to create a, a special part in the local storage of your website that will store all of the uh, queries that you have made. We limit the display to five elements. And then, as in query suggestions, we have a transform source method that will allow us to generate the item URL for navigation purpose, and then to uh, customize the templates. And I should mention that 
uh, it's not necessary to store your recent searches in local storage. This is just an implementation that we provide, but you can store your recent searches in everything you want. You can store that in a database. You can send it to an API so you can store that in a database and share it with maybe uh, a mobile application. Uh, you can store that in a file, in session storage, in cookies, whatever you want. So let's save it and let's save and look at it. And now we have nothing, but if I search on iPhone and I go back to this, well, I don't have it either. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why right now. It's because I haven't added it to the list of plugins. So let's quickly do that. And now you can see the iPad is here. And it's here because I have added it in previous uh, development uh, of this uh, instance. So it has stayed in the local storage. And since, since I used the same key, it appears right now. And as we did with uh, the query suggestion, we can quickly change the template for that, for the item. And now we have a beautiful uh, layout for our recent searches. And as you can see, the icon is different. And we now have a, sec a second action that's specific to recent searches that allows you to clear this from the list of recent searches. For example, if you are looking for a gift for your partner and uh, you want to remove that so they can't find the, find it later, uh, well, you can do that quickly with easily with uh, autocomplete and the recent search plugin. And this is done with the onRemove method that's provided by the plugin here. All right, we have our recent search, we have our query suggestions, and um, yeah, let me just search for Apple products. And let's take a look at the dropdown now. Isn't something a bit weird here? Well, if you have remarked that Apple is now present twice in the list, you're right. And that's because we haven't deduplicated the results, but it's you can, you can do that in a few lines. And that's what we are going to do right now. You can take into account the, the recent search results in your query suggestions uh, plugin. And for that, you just have to add the get search params method that will, call, that will retrieve the data from recent search and will allow you to deduplicate while keeping a maximum number of items displayed. And now if I take a look at uh, the dropdown of uh, query suggestions, you can see that Apple is here, but has disappeared from the uh, query suggestions list. And if I remove it from the list, it's now part of the initial set of query suggestions. So that's kind of magical, but it works. And those details will allow you to provide uh, the best in class experience to your customers. Well, now we have a working autocomplete experience. That's great. But if we, um, if we search for an iPad here, uh, we are uh, navigating to the search page, but as you can see, uh, the iPad search parameter is present in the URL, but it's not present in the autocomplete input box. Why, why it is like that? Well, that's because right now autocomplete doesn't know uh, that something is coming from the query parameter. So we can make autocomplete aware of that by adding a query to its initial state if there is a search parameter present. And for that, we are first going to list those search parameters. We can do that just here. We can use uh, the standard URL search params method to uh, create a map of the search parameters from our location. And then we can define an initial state of our autocomplete that's going to have this uh, query parameter if it exists. And we can default that to an empty string, empty string if necessary. And just like that, if I refresh, you can see now that iPad is now shown on the, in the autocomplete uh, input box. OK, that's cool. And to finish it off, now, as you can see, I can navigate with the keyboard. If I tap Enter, I get redirected to the search page. 
But what if I want to uh, search for something that's not available from the uh, uh, query suggestions? So what if I want to search for uh, airports, for example? As you can see, uh, it's not available in the query suggestion, but I still want to buy that. Uh, so if I tap Enter, nothing happens. And that's because since we don't have any element in the string, in the, in the list of uh, either recent searches or uh, query suggestions, we don't have a link to redirect to. So to uh, allow us to submit the, the query from the input element, when we can add sub an unsubmit event handler here, that will redirect us whatever the query uh, we enter here. And now, as you can see, let's remove that. I can tap, type AirPods, and I'm now redirected to the search page when I type Enter. All right, that's cool. And I think that by doing that, we have completed our autocomplete implementation in like 20 minutes. So how is that? Uh, since I'm a bit ahead of time, um, maybe we have some questions in the chat that uh, we could answer live. What do you think, Sarah? So all the questions were answered, but there was one uh, one point at some point you used the recent searches plugin and you mentioned that uh, you can uh, use it with local storage by default, but also plug it with cookies, etc. And so um, we had a question from Christina saying, you mentioned cookies, is cookies necessary for this? So we explained that it isn't, but maybe you want to re-explain it live. Well, as you said, it, it isn't, and uh, it will mostly require uh, a server-side component to write the cookie uh, with the data. So uh, in most cases, um, it's fine if you use local storage for that, or the, a database if you want to share uh, the recent searches between multiple devices. Um, so yeah, really not necessary to uh, look at cookies like that. All right. Um, if we have no other questions, let's move ahead with the presentation and take a look at this search page, this really empty, sad search page that we have right now. And what can we do to make it lively, to, to lighten it up? Well, first, we can add the products uh, that are coming from our uh, Algolia dataset. And as you can see, as you will see, uh, it's going to take us just a few lines. So we'll move back. We'll move to uh, the search JS page, page with a script, sorry, uh, which is uh, loaded specifically for uh, the search page experience. And uh, we're going to instantiate instant search. And as with the query suggestions plugin that we saw earlier, the instant search uh, implementation will require you to have a search client uh, available that has correct credentials to connect to Algolia and retrieve uh, the right set of products from your data set. So let's initialize this. I haven't lied, you have your search client listed here, and then you have your product index uh, that's referenced as well. And uh, basically, it's just three steps. You create the instance, you add widgets to this instance, and then you start the experience. But for now, if I do that, nothing happens. And that's because the only widget that has been added right now is not a visual widget. It's a widget that changes the search parameters to allow us to list only nine products per page, which will be better for our layout, for our uh, grid layout with three columns. So how can we make it better? How can we add hits, add, uh, add products uh, listing here? Well, we just need to add a second widget here. And that's the infinite hit widget. And as you can see, as I have saved and the page automatically reloaded, now we have a nice, horrible JSON representation of our products. And maybe you have customers that want that. I won't judge. But I think for those that we're looking for, 
Um, they might prefer something with more images, with a price that's readily available, and yeah, more uh, design stuff. So let's work on that. Um, but first, let's take a look at how it's constructed. Well, this infinite hits widget that's coming from Algolia requires a container, the same as autocomplete, uh, no surprise here. You can see in the search Laravel template that we are indeed targeting this div and we will remove this placeholder here. And as we are targeting this div, we also specify a few sets of CSS classes that are coming from Tailwind that allow us to uh, change the, the styling on some of the components inside of our infinite hits uh, widget. The infinite hits widget uh, is a container with a, a, a grid and then inside you have a list of products and all of those are styled with uh, this property here and that's pretty powerful. And as you can see, we have styles for uh, some stuff here that are interesting. We have a load more and a load previous and a, dis a disabled load previous and a disabled load more. What are that? What are those? Well, those are buttons that allow you to paginate uh, as you want, as you go uh, through the results that are coming from Algolia. And this is very powerful in a mobile setting where uh, you don't want to add a full pagination widget with a lot of numbers and you really want to let the user swipe until it reaches the end of the page and then click as he wants to load uh, more results. So that's a great opportunity to use that here uh, in this context. But let's quickly address the JSON situation here. Um, well, you can customize the infinite hits, of course, and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to uh, customize uh, the item template of infinite hits, which will allow us to have some custom markup to display each of our item as we want. And as you can see, it follows the same con convention that we had uh, previously in autocomplete, you can leverage the same powerful HTML tag template method that allows you to have a, 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 an HTML-like syntax with the benefits from a VDOM without the downside of it. And you can here add some uh, um, variables that are coming from the item template arguments. So this will allow you to, uh, for example, add a link, add an image, add a title. And we are going also to have some highlighting here for the title. It's not present for now, and I'll tell you why in a few seconds. And then we can format the price according to the uh, user local. So that's very uh, good now. That's pretty much better. And that's, uh, we removed the the JSON stuff. So, okay, we can still add a few things here. Um, first of all, there's something that I've noticed and I don't know if you noticed, but I'm currently looking for iPads. Why do I have MacBooks and iPhones and stuff like that? That doesn't make sense. Well, the answer is pretty uh, easy and it's because Instant Search right now doesn't know that it should look uh, for the query parameter in the URL. So it doesn't know that it's looking for iPads. And we can address that by adding routing to our instant search application. When you add routing, you add a lot of, uh, you, you, you have a lot of benefits. You can uh, make the state dependent on the URL and conversely, you can make the URL dependent on the state. So you have a bi-directional relationship with uh, the ins with instant search and the address bar. And that means that you can easily share a specific uh, refined portion of your search to your friends uh, to make their uh, life easy when you want to tell them, hey, look at the new iPhone, look at the price, it's amazing. So to add routing to instant search, there are a few methods, but th they all start with uh, this you uh, add a routing object, and then you define what's the level of uh, involvement you want to, uh, to add to the routing. You can add the basic routing when uh, you don't want to bother with what the URL is going to look like, and that's fine. And you can, uh, at the opposite spectrum, 
you want to be uh, very involved with the routing and you want to control uh, that the query is named query, that when you are uh, filtering on brands, that the query parameter is named brand and the, the, the values are separated by uh, semicolons or commas or stuff like that. So you can have uh, uh, better looking URLs that you can share. And you can have something in the middle, which is what we are using here, when you are using just a single index with your instant search application, and you just want to clean a little bit the search experience so you can surface the query parameter uh, as it's done currently in the URL. So when you do that, you, you save this and you refresh, but still nothing happens. And that's because uh, instant search has a specific relationship with the query in that it needs to have, uh, uh, you need to add a widget that actually uses the query to make it understand that the query is going to act uh, and to do something uh, in relationship to your search experience. So it dictates, it dictates, sorry, whether you are impacting the query or not. And for that, we are going to add a search box in our application, but we are going to add a visible search box because we have an autocomplete right now that's acting like it and we don't want to have two search boxes that doesn't mean anything. So we are going to add a search box that's going to be rendered off screen, off, uh, outside of the DOM. And to do that, you can uh, add the search box widget and you can here specify the container as a document fragment that's going to be rendered off, off DOM. There is another alternative uh, where you can create a virtual search box by using the underlying connector that powers the search box widget, but I'm not going to cover it right now. And we'll talk about connectors in just a few minutes with another use case. All right, I'm saving, I'm reloading, and boom, now all the products are, are visible, are related to the iPad. And of course, I can search for anything here. I can search for Samsung and I have all Samsung devices. I can search for Switch and I have all mostly all Nintendo Switch related products. So yeah, we did it. We have a search experience that's bound to the autocomplete experience by using the URL as uh, an intermediate here. And that's pretty powerful. What can we do uh, more now? Well, what we can do now is that we can find a way to make uh, uh, the search more delightful for users. Now users are searching with queries and that's fine, but there are other methods that allow users to discover new products and you can help them achieve that by adding a way to filter down on your product using uh, refinements. Like you can drill down on categories, you can filter by brand, you can select the color you prefer, you can uh, uh, um, refine uh, according to your price range. So uh, there are a few ways you can achieve that and they are made with uh, some of the widgets that we provide here. And we're gonna take a look at that right now. Um, and so, as you can see here, we have uh, an experience that's responsive, as, as I have stated earlier. And uh, we have some, already we have uh, some placeholders for the filter we are going to add now. And we have uh, the placeholders on uh, desktop. But if we uh, go to a responsive view, we also have filters on this uh, mobile menu that can be toggled on and off. So that means in this instance, we are going to add two times each of the uh, refinement widget. And we are going to do that in a way that's going to simplify our life. So we are going to create a method that's going to return the list of widgets. And we can provide this method uh, a string, which is, which is going to correspond to a type, either desktop or mobile. And that will allow us to target some of the placeholders that are already uh, present in the uh, search page template. That, follow, that all follow a similar uh, naming convention, which is filter type attribute. So we have already done that uh, in the template. Let's just create the helper method here. All right, so we have our get filters method. It returns an empty array for now, but that's all right. We can now add this 
to our uh, widget lists. And nothing will happen for now because we haven't added any filter now, right now. But if we start adding, for example, a hierarchical uh, menu widget, this will allow us to quickly see that in our experience, we now have a populated categories widget, which is a hierarchical uh, widget that allow us to go deep down on a category. For example, you're looking for a high-tech product, but it's more related to a photo product. So now you have GoPros and Fujifilm Instax and uh, other products like that. Or you want to look at connected device like watches, or maybe you just look for entertainment and you are going to have a mix and mashup of game consoles or uh, a GPS, why not? Or a Wii, if you are in retro gaming. I can say that retro gaming now, it's 2022. <laughs> all right. We are not going to stop here. We are going to add all of the uh, refinement widgets right now. And we are going to add both the brand and the color uh, refinement widgets at the same time, because they will follow the same, uh, they will use the same widget with the, the same uh, configuration options apart from the attributes. So we iterate on uh, the attribute we want to uh, target in our Algolia dataset. And for each of those, we create a refinement list. And just like that, we are now able to filter uh, by brand. Okay, let's look at the Google phones. And by color, maybe I want the orange Google phones. That's awesome. And let me show you how it looks like in a mobile environment. Okay, so I have my filter dropdown, uh, mobile menu, uh, sorry, my filter mobile menu uh, element. And if I uh, open the categories disclosure, I see my categories. If I have the brand, if I open it, I have it. And if I select a brand here, Apple and Samsung, and let's select the silver products, and I go back to my desktop mode, you see that nothing has been lost. Everything is in sync and everything is handled by instant search in its global state. So uh, that's one of the power of instant search is that you don't have to worry about binding a widget with another widget with a state or something like that. You just play Lego with it, just build your blocks and uh, little by little you construct your search experience. And to top it off, let's look at how we can add a price range widget here. All right, and just like that, I can focus on the cheapest products available in the data set. And well, you can buy an iMac for that. Amazing. So that's great. We are already looking at an, uh, a pretty good uh, search experience. It misses a few things. You can iron out a few kinks, but it's already looking good. And we are going to add a few more stuff that will make it really exceptional. First, let's take a look at how you can uh, change the sorting of your products. Right now, you're using the default sorting cri criteria, which is a relevant sorting because we are targeting the relevant sorted uh, index uh, at Algolia. But you might not know it, but with Algolia, sorting is static. That means that you can use replica indices that are derived from the primary index and change the search parameters by stating in the dashboard or with the API that you want your replica to be sorted by a high to low price and uh, conversely by low to high prices. And we can add this kind of widget in a few lines of code as well. So by going back to our list of widgets here, we can just here insert our sort by widget, which is a widget that provided by instant search as well. And I'm gonna uh, show you the list of widgets. It's mind blowing. And I'm, I'm not showing you like half of the widgets we provide for the purpose of this workshop. All right. And now we have in this gray bar, a way to sort by price. And you can buy the cheapest USB A to Lightning smartphone accessory for Samsung devices, and you can buy the uh, most costly uh, product that's available in this data set right now. 
which is a pretty uh, good MacBook with a lot of power, but from 2019. Um, okay, let's move on. We're just touching on the gray bar here. And what's, what's the purpose of this gray bar? Well, as the title says, it's an active filters bar and it will allow you to have a synthetic view of all the currently refinement, uh, the uh, current refinement, sorry, that you have uh, applied in your products right now. And as you can see, when you are looking for high-tech products from Dell uh, that might be silver or gray, um, and um, yeah, let me just go back to the relevant sorting, that might be black, for example, and that are uh, priced at more than $100, you can see that we have scrolled a bit, and it's not really easy to have a clear view of what's currently applied. So for that, we can uh, uh, directly uh, display the current filters in a dedicated location here in this gray bar. And we do that just by adding the aptly named current refinements widget that's also uh, provided with Algolia. And voila. Now you have your brand, you have your color, you have your category, you have your price, but it's pretty ugly. So what can we do about that? Right now, the, the label of the current refinement element is showing you the, the name in the data set, which is justifiable. It's all right. That's how it's named in, in the uh, JSON representation, in the rep object representation that you send to Algolia. But you might want to make it a bit uh, nicer for users of your website. Not all of the users are developers that will know immediately if it's uh, normal or not. So for that, we are just going to create a mapping table that will map brand label to label, categories level zero to categories, etc. Just as easy as that. It's an object that has as a key uh, the right, the correctly, uh, the correct name of the uh, property in your data set, and it matches that with uh, what you actually wanted to display. And we are going to use uh, the transform item uh, method of uh, most of the widgets we provide that allow you to take as an input the list of items that are going to be rendered. And you can change that before they are rendered. So you have this power at your hands that you can use when necessary. OK, so we take. We take our items, and for each of our item, we just are going to find the mapping for the label. And if we don't have, for example, the mapping for categories, it will fall back to uh, the one from the data set. And now we have uh, gracefully degraded. Uh, we have a graceful degradation of of this behavior if we uh, forget to update the list, for example. Okay, and uh, well, I think. Uh, it's looking pretty good right now. Let me just add one or two things uh, before we move on to the next part of this workshop. And um, now that we have all of those filters in either in the sidebar or in the synthetic view, uh, yeah, it might be a bit of a bother to remove all of them one by one, don't you think? Yeah, I'm doing it right now, and I'm already pretty much uh, bothered by that. So just for the sake of the example, I'm going to take it upon myself and re-add them. And then we're going to take a look at how we can make that behavior uh, easier for us and for our customers. OK. So we have those uh, refinements. And what if we had a way to uh, remove them all at once with the press of a button? And that's not a dream. That's reality right now with the clear refinements widget that we are going to add uh, in the gray bar at the far end of the list of current refinements. Let's do that right now. As always, I'm using my trusty snippets to do that instead of typing for a, a whole hour. And it's named, I think, clear. All right. And similarly at what we already had, uh, we already have seen uh, for the last hour, uh, it needs a container. It has a template. You can customize the CSS classes. And when I save this, 
I have this beautiful button that I can click on and everything disappear. And even the button disappear because now they have are no refinements. So it has no, uh, it has uh, no justification from, for being here. And so that's great. And let me just finish uh, this uh, implementation by adding uh, just a mention here, a way for the user to know that there are no current refinements and, there, and to just add something in this empty land of gray here. So uh, the user might not think it's a mistake or an error. And for that, we are going to take a look at the power of the connectors in Instance Search JS. Because yeah, it happens. Sometimes you don't have the widget that you want. Well, we don't have currently a way to tell us uh, that's shipped with Instance JS, a way to tell us that, OK, there are no refinements. But what do we have? We have the current refinements widget that, that you now know uh, well, which is this thing here. And what if we can leverage the same logic that's been applied for this without using the, the rendering of it, without having a list with uh, the, those peels and the buttons and stuff like that? What if we can just take the part that says, OK, we have items, and OK, we don't have items, and render a specific uh, element in each case. Well, that's what we can do in a few lines of code with uh, connect current refinements. So let me just show you how it looks like. OK, so we are going to have a custom widget that is going to use uh, a connector for another widget, which is named current refinements. And this widget, what interests us in this uh, connector, sorry, is that it has a can refine property. And this is a Boolean value that says, OK, you can refine because you have refinements applied. And it can also say, you don't have refinements applied, so there's no need to refine. And this is what this Boolean does. And this is why we are conditioning uh, the uh, inner, uh, uh, we are sorry, we are conditioning what we are rendering uh, within our container here. And so if we can't refine, we are just going to add a label that says, hey, you don't have any active filters. You can add if you want. Let me just show you how we can add this custom widget in our list of widgets. And it's not going to be difficult. I'm going to show you right now. All right. And I was wrong on the name of the container, so I'm going to fall back to uh, the snippet, which is more, uh, which is better than my memory. Uh, no filter to beam. OK, yeah. And now we have this label that's visible when you don't have refinements. And when you have a refinement, it disappears. It is replaced with the current refinements widget. And it also uh, allow the clear all uh, button to be visible as well. All right, and I think we are done with our search experience. What do you think of it? We have a full-fledged search experience that correctly uh, interacts with autocomplete. And you can look at iPads here. The highlight is showing you uh, which part of the query matches the products. And you can also load more results if you want. Something that I haven't shown you is that if you refresh the page, you can you start directly on the second page because it's part of the routing. But you can go back to the first page if you want. That's why we had the show previous uh, true uh, parameter in uh, our uh, starting point when we started implementing instant search. And if you click on that, you go back to the first set of results. You can drill down on categories. You can filter by brand, by color, by price. And you can view all of that in this uh, beautiful gray uh, status bar that is showing you the current refinements applied and that allows you to sort these uh, products as well. OK, um, how are we doing on time? I think we are pretty good. Oh, nice. <laughs> OK, um, are there any questions we can answer live in this segment? So Mandy asked, uh, please introduce other price widget or facet types. So maybe we could go over the docs of Instance or JS to see a bunch of the widgets we have for faceting and for price. 
That's a great question and that's a great suggestion. So here we are in the instant search JS documentation and I'm gonna open on the left side uh, something that we call the showcase. And it's uh, um, a way to show you all of, all of the widgets that we have in instant search. So let me just show you how it looks like. Okay, so as I uh, said earlier, we are not touching on all of the widgets here because we are only adding those that uh, are uh, corresponding to the experience we want to provide, but you can add a whole lot, uh, uh, a whole family of widgets here. You can, for example, implement voice search if you want. You can um, add, uh, instead of having highlight, you can have re reverse highlight in your items. And uh, regarding faceting, you have the refinement list that we saw, you have the hierarchical menu that we saw, but you also have other ways to sort on uh, to so, sorry to filter on price, and so you have a basic filter numer numeric menu here that allow you to define price ranges, um, and that can and that uh, dynamically updates the list of products here. As you can see, you can have the range input that I have implemented in the workshop, and you also have in instant search JS. At least we don't have this in all our implementations. We have a way to sort on price using a range slider. And you know what? Oh, I thought we were live and we were going to have <laughs> an issue here, but it's fine. <laughs> and you have a range slider that allows you to uh, more interactively uh, find out what are the boundaries of uh, the, uh, regarding the price that you want to look at. So these are uh, refinements regarding price range. You also have a way to uh, filter on ratings if you want. So we have a dedicated rating menu that if you have a, a, one, a zero to five rating scale in your uh, data set, you can use uh, by dropping it down in your widget lists. You have a toggle refinement that allow you to quickly add a free shipping uh, filter here. And um, yeah, I think that's... Uh, that might be that might not be all of it. Then you have other widgets that are related to state representation. You can uh, show in a breadcrumb manner uh, the the depth in which you have navigated into your categories, into your hierarchical categories. You can show stats like, for example, hey, uh, by searching for iPad, you have um, nine thousand results and they have been received in like two milliseconds because that's how amazing Algolia is. And um, yeah, does that answer uh, your question? If you uh, want to take uh, a, deep, a deep look at it, feel free to uh, copy this URL. Uh, it ma someone might be able to uh, put that in the chat. Um, and yeah. All right. So we are finished. Oh, I have one more thing I should add to this that I forgot actually. <laughs> All right, let, let's let's just add a few a few just a, just a little thing that can make the experience for your users better. Well, let's imagine I'm a big fan of cheese, and I think that some of you might be too. Let me uh, look for cheese results, cheese products. Well, in this case, um, yeah. We don't, the, the, the store don't, doesn't sell cheese. It only sells high-tech stuff. It's sad, but it's the life it is. So what do we have here? We have a way for instant search to, uh, and for the infinite hits widgets to show you that there are no results. But right now the template is pretty sparse. So you can uh, customize that as well with uh, the empty template that's available in the infinite hits widget. And just by doing that, you are able to uh, find a better way to uh, communicate that the query wasn't successful. You can even take a look at other elements of the instant search state, for example, knowing if there are refinements applied and, uh, for example, going uh, uh, in a bit of an advanced uh, situation here when you add a button and uh, the button will allow you to clear the, the refinements to allow the user to uh, roll back on some of the filters that ha might have caused uh, an empty state, an empty result state to occur. So yeah, that's a pretty nice thing to add in all of your search experiences. All right, I think we're done with this. Let's move back to the uh, home page, and we have a, a, a gap to fill in here because 
we have talked about the autocomplete, we have talked about search, but as your users start searching and browsing through your products, they are going to send uh, mostly, in most cases, events and tracking information, uh, for example, uh, by uh, sending information on what are they clicking on? Are they adding the product into their cart? Are they abandoning their cart? Are they uh, buying the product? And all this can be used with Algolia. We have a, a, a great product that leverages these uh, 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 insights and ana analytics data. And this can be fed into machine learning to create, for example, a list of trending products. For example, you could surface, surface that and make uh, the discovery experience better for your users. They might not be interested in uh, buying a specific product, but if you show them this product uh, ahead of time, they might be enticed to buy it. And so we're going to add that right now in, in this page. We are going into our home JS script, which is the script that is uh, loaded by the home page. And um, as with uh, autocomplete and uh, instant search, we are going to uh, need a way to communicate with uh, Algolia. And this time we are not going to use the search client because recommend is another set of API. So we are going to use a recommend client but I'd advise you to uh, put that in uh, its own file so you can have a single instance. For example, when you want to uh, go um, into more details into what uh, Algolia recommend can help us, uh, what Algolia recommend, sorry, can help us with. And I'll talk to you about that in a few minutes. So once you have a recommend client, you can instantiate uh, uh, a trending product uh, component here. And so let's do that right now. So this uh, looks like the same as autocomplete and uh, instant search. And it's one of the advantages of having so many uh, facets to our product line is that we can uh, have uh, somewhat the same API and uh, the same uh, best practices to uh, integrate with. So you are not uh, looking at the documentation for too long, finding why does it doesn't why, why doesn't it work like that in some case and, and stuff and stuff like that. So yeah, we uh, feed in our recommend client, we target an index, we specify the max number, uh, maximum number of recommendation, uh, sorry, we want to show, and then we define an item component that's going to render uh, what uh, are the uh, that's going to render the look and feel of the items that are trending right now for this website. Okay, and it's working, that's great. And at the same as always, it needs a little bit more polish to be uh, shipped in production. So let's look at how we can do that right now. First of all, we are going to change the, the item template so it can have uh, pictures and price and more information. Okay, it uses the same uh, HTML method uh, as in autocomplete and instant search yes. I have already shared with you the benefits of that. So I urge you to use that instead of legacy methods that, that you would find uh, in uh, uh, some existing projects, for example. And by doing that, we now have a list, but really we do want, we want a list that can be scrolled horizontally in this case and uh, we can achieve that by using um, a component that's available from Algolia, that's the horizontal slider component. And you just add it, add it like that. So it's already imported, as you can see here, and we already import the, th the theme for that, sorry. So we don't have to bother about theming the, the, the slider and the arrows that allow you to move back and forth the elements. And if we refresh, Voila, we now have a working implementation of trending items that are coming dynamically, that are uh, coming from Algolia, and uh, that are going to be updated as uh, the users navigate on your site and, uh, and uh, trigger uh, analytics action. And so uh, you now have a, a very intelligent way of surfacing uh, items in your website. Let's just put some polish on the header here because we can do that with this component as well. And now we have a better looking heading and a way to go to uh, the search page 
to browse uh, an unfiltered set of results. And yeah, I think in less than five minutes and a bit of help from our trusty snippets, we have been able to uh, add an Algolia recommend feature. And that's not the end. Uh, here we are done with this part of the workshop, but let's imagine you you go uh, you 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 go ahead and you want to now implement a product display page. So you want to have the details of the product that you you have clicked on. Well, there are other uh, elements from Algolia I recommend that you can uh, leverage here, and it's a, a whole new world of uh, features that you can bring to your customers. And you can, for example, in a PDP, in a product uh, detail page, sorry, you can uh, show frequently bought together products or related products in the same way that you can find in Amazon or other major retailing websites. And um, on a product listing page or in another page, you can display trending facets instead of trending products, which means that you can show what are the most uh, popular categories uh, in a, a data set, which allow you, uh, which allows you to create category pages that are uh, helpful in this situation to uh, filter on a specific popular category, for example, uh, on a popular iPhone accessories or Samsung accessories and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I think we did it. Uh, let me just walk you through the website once again. We have our homepage here, which we can use to uh, look for cheese or other uh, more relevant stuff. For example, if I take a look at iPhone, you can see that it highlights the, differ the, di uh, the part that's differing from the query that I have entered, which is a, a pattern that we want to promote, uh, which is here the reverse highlight uh, pattern. And so it makes it easier to see uh, what is the difference between all of those res results. We have recent searches, so you can go back to a search you have made previously without having to remember it. Below, we have uh, our trending products that are coming uh, from Algolia Recommend, uh, which uh, are using a data set that is trained to surface the most popular products. And then in the search page, we have a beautiful uh, grid of products accompanied with a, a, a not less beautiful uh, list of filters and a way to sort your products to uh, interact with uh, an existing search like here with the autocomplete and the URL. And you can show a, syn um, a synthetic view of your applied refinements in the active filters bar. And of course, all of this works on mobile as well. So you have a great responsive experience that's provided uh, with instant search JS and autocomplete and recommend. Okay, I'm gonna take a sip of water and maybe we have uh, some uh, last questions we can answer here. So Kent ask, how do you recommend maintaining recommend state on a page? For example, if something is already viewed or clicked can it be demoted from the rendered list? Oh, that's a very good question. And I think we can, if you find a way to uh, get the information on the items you viewed, and you can store that in a state, you can filter them using transform items uh, by removing them from the list of items that is going to be shown in the trending product uh, widget. Does that answer the question? So I Yes, I think that would be the way you, you would do it, but then you would have to store that information on yeah. your end, so in memory, and indeed you would use transform items. Yeah. Yes, that's how you would do it. All right. You're welcome. And um, yeah, we're a bit early. Um, so uh, let me just talk a little bit about uh, what are the uh, support documents that will allow you to build this experience. Well, your entry point for this, for your journey with Algolia and Instant Search in particular and Recommend and Autocomplete is the Algolia documentation website. In here, you'll find uh, a quick way to get started with Algolia 
either uh, uh, and it can be by uh, for for example adding uh, your uh, da data into Algolia or building your search UI. And as you can see here, we are here we are focusing on instant search JS, but uh, we also have other versions of the library. Uh, we have React versions, the React Instant Search Hooks version that we released um, uh, in uh, global availability yesterday, and an Angular view version. And we also have native versions. And you will see uh, more about that in, uh, I think, 30 minutes with Muad and Vlad in the next workshop. And so when you're here, you can have uh, well-written guides that will allow you to get started to install the dependencies to upgrade if you are working on the previous base of uh, previous previous version sorry of the instant search uh, library and you can go uh, way uh, ahead in an advanced situation where you want to uh, customize an existing widget like we did here with the connect current refinements method or you can create your own widgets and of course if you have to do that feel free to reach us uh, at Algolia, so we can help you with that because our goal here is uh, not to make you create your own widgets, but to provide an easy drop-in way for you to build your search experience. And so we have a lot of guides here, and then you can go to the uh, API reference, which is uh, the complete documentation of our uh, API. And if we take a look at our infinite hits that we have implemented a few minutes ago, you can see here that it needs a container and there are other op options that we haven't used here. So uh, you might uh, find something for you here as well. You have the same documentation for uh, autocomplete and recommend as I have said earlier. And um, yeah, to finish it off, let me just once again, uh, give a huge shout out to uh, Back Market for allowing us to provide you with this uh, beautiful looking uh, experience with uh, their product data set that they kindly uh, lent us for the purpose of this demonstration. Um, and a reminder, as I have uh, uh, stated in the beginning, that the data set is their own property and it, uh, uh, and it can't be used for unauthorized uh, use cases outside of the context of this workshop. So uh, just so you know, uh, uh, they're very kind that they allow us uh, doing that. And um, I think if that, if you have, uh, if you don't have any questions, we can uh, claim back a few minutes of our time. We can uh, get some water, get some refreshments. Um, and uh, yeah, get ready for the next workshop in more than a little bit more than 20 minutes now. All right. Thanks again, everyone. I am Daya Ben Mesaoud, a senior front end engineer at Algolia on the front end experiences team. And I leave you in the very capable hands of Muad and Vlad uh, for their workshop in the next session. Have a nice day. Bye.